So, Man of Steel is the next movie we are looking at in this retrospective series, but it comes to Superman. We just watched Superman 1, Superman 2, and I thought, let's move Man of Steel up, because we can compare Man of Steel to those two movies, because they have such similar themes, and they can be easily compared and contrast. And I wanted to talk about Man of Steel. So I decided, let's move that bad boy up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about that. Smash your comments down in that section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And let's do this. Let's dive into Man of Steel. Okay, so Zack Snyder's Man of Steel was the movie that kickstarted the DCEU that never got really going. It never did, did it? But that's a story for another day. Let's talk about Man of Steel. Like, okay. So, if you guys know me, and you've been watching me, you know how much I absolutely love Man of Steel. That is one of the reasons why I moved it up. Because I wanted to talk about this movie. Because I love this movie so much. Not only do I think this is the best Superman movie, in my opinion, it is the best comic book movie of all time. Now, I know a lot of you aren't going to agree with me. And that's completely fine. It's film, it's subjective. I don't mind. I know this film is divisive and it doesn't work for some people. But for me, this worked on every level. So when we talk about Man of Steel, let's start at the beginning. So we have the Kryptonian scene going on at Krypton. Now, when we compare this sequence to the one in the first original Superman, the movie, I feel like Zack Snyder did this one much better. And there's reasons why I believe that. Firstly, the first Superman movie, it's kind of an ice shelf. It's very hard for me to believe that life forms live on there. I mean, I just don't see how they could be compatibly possible for them to live there. Now, that could be because, obviously, we don't know everything about the universe and how life forms are created or anything like that. So that, that could play a part in it. So there could potentially be an ice shelf out there somewhere where they do live in. But that's what it feels like to me. I don't feel like it's believable. However, Zack Snyder's world that he created when it came to Krypton is much more believable. I actually believe that there are beings of some sort that could live on that planet. And we see that. And I think he just nailed that aesthetic look of Krypton a lot better than what we saw in the original Superman. That's just a personal preference to me. Some people might like the original one. And that's completely fine. But for me, Zack Snyder's Krypton looked a lot better. Now, as for the Kryptonian sequence itself, I feel like Zack gave us a bit more backstory and a bit more meat to it than the original Superman did. I mean, we got a lot more about this. We got to understand the society and how Krypton actually works with the idea of babies being born and already genetically enhanced for a role in society. Having that mindset already preset in their mind that this is what they're going to do when they grow up. This is their job. And I love that idea. And then Jarrell, having a baby with Lara for the first time, a natural born birth born birth, I can't even speak right now, a natural birth on Krypton for the first time in a thousand years, and his idea is being able to have this kid, not be trapped by society itself, not being trapped in the ways of that, but having the freedom, the choice to be what he wants to be, to strive to be something better, and I love this idea and this moral it's so brilliant, and Jarrell just knows that, and that's what makes him such a great character, is this idea of, we are the worst of Krypton, he can be better, he can make Krypton better, but obviously when General Zord is about to just absolutely take over the place, because he's pissed off at the High Council, because they have ran Krypton into the ground by mining the core after Jarrell told him not to do that, he is now going to take over, and we get this beautiful fight sequence between him and Jor-El as they're trying to stop Clark, because Clark has the Codex. So I really like that idea of having the Codex in him. It gives it more a more sense of purpose to why General Zord will want to go after Clark, because he has the Codex. And I think that is great, because it really works really well for the motive of General Zord moving forward, which I think is key. And then we get that sequence there, that scary sequence of Michael Shannon just being absolutely brilliant when he is about to be sent to the Phantom Zone. And he says to Lara, you think your son is safe? I will find him. And then he yells it at her. And like, dude, this scene is so good because I believe General Zord. 
I believe that he is about to get out of this Phantom Zone, and he is going to find Clark. He's going to find him no matter what. And I believed him. And I thought that performance was fantastic. So all the Krypton stuff of Man of Steel, I think is absolutely brilliant compared to the original. And I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. Now, when we move to the actual origin story of Superman and Clark itself, we don't actually see him as a kid. We see him grown up. And what I love about this whole sequence is Zack Snyder. This, this is just, I think, absolutely fantastic writing. Is he... Later on in the movie, Chuck Clark is going to be standing there with a choice. He either saves humanity or saves Krypton. But one has to go. Zack decided to show us Superman going through the best and the worst of humanity. And I love that idea. I love that concept. Him seeing the best of someone saving his life on the boat at opening scene. Putting his life at risk to save Clark. Then we get the bar scene where he sees the worst of humanity of a guy just harassing a woman, being an absolute creep, and then when told, no, man, you need to stop, otherwise I'm going to have to ask you to leave, he steps up and tries to like fight Clark and throw stuff on him. That's what I love is Clark is already getting this idea of the best and worst. And I absolutely love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And then we get that scene the flashback scenes there. Zack Snyder is so good when he does these flashbacks in between there. It just makes it, it makes it flow better for me rather than just having from a kid all the way up. I feel like having the flashbacks worked really, really well for Man of Steel and it added that weight and that emotion because in that moment, we get that scene as well when he discovers his powers for the first time and this kid is just getting everything. Noises. He's getting every single person's voice in the world. He can see through people. X-ray vision's coming through. It's just brutal. It's absolutely brutal. And this is where we start to see that relationship with his mother. And I think it's fantastic. Then we get what I think is one of the most un misunderstood scenes in all of cinematic history. When Clark sees that bus and he gets that flashback. to so the bus going off. Clark going in the water. Saving him. Saving all the kids from disaster. From death. Now obviously one of the kids does see this. Well most of them saw it. So... Now we get this scene of Jonathan Kent and Clark standing there talking about the moment that Clark saved him. And I, this is where I think people misunderstood. Like, granted, you don't have to like the scene or anything, but I feel like it's misunderstood. So when Jonathan Kent says to Clark, maybe, like, Clark's like, what? What am I meant to do? I'm supposed to save them. And then when he says, maybe not. I don't, Look, people may say, like, oh, this is Jonathan Kent saying that you should have killed the kids. No, it's not. This is Jonathan Kent just verbalizing his thought process here of, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, you remember, Jonathan Kent has been put in a situation where he's got a kid that is in his own blood that is got unbelievable, insane powers that no one has ever seen on the planet. And what I love as well is Zack Snyder then double downs on this. And when Perry's talking to Lois Lane, he even says to her, could you imagine if the world found out someone like this existed and they're on this planet? Like, just imagine the mass panic. And that is what Jonathan Kent is trying to tell Clark. is like, yes, you should have saved the kids. You did the right thing. But at the same time, we need to find a way to sh mask this. Because what happens if the government come and they take you away? Like, this is it. And he even says Clark is the critical character that is either going to be good or bad. And he has to instill everything that he knows, his morals and values, to Clark to stop him from going down the route that could destroy humanity. Because one way or another, Clark is going to change humanity for either the good or the bad. So when Jonathan Kent says, maybe, he doesn't literally mean, maybe you should have let them, let them die. No, he's saying, look, I'm trying to do the best I can do. I don't know. I'm in a situation that I have no idea what to do. All I know is I need to protect you at all costs because if we lose you, then who knows what can happen to the world. So this is where I think that misunderstanding is. is like people are like saying, oh, he means kill, let them die. No, he doesn't. He knows what Clark did is right. He's just thinking out loud and trying to understand what he has to do as a father in that situation to a kid who's got these amazing abilities but is still a kid. At the end of the day. And if the government get him man. Who knows what the hell they're going to do to that kid. Who knows. 
So I feel like that's a misunderstood scene. And then we obviously get that beautiful scene where he tells Clark that he's from another world and Clark doesn't want that burden. And he feels like, man, I don't want to be that answer to that question. Are we alone in the universe? And that wholesome moment where he's like, can I just go back to pretending to be your son? It's beautiful. And this is where that relationship with Jonathan Kent and Clark begins. I love their relationship. And then we fast forward. Lois Lane is turning every stone unturned to find Clark Kent. She gets to the Kent residence and then she finds Jonathan Kent's grave. And then obviously this is where Clark gets that first interaction as like himself, like actually talking to her. And he tells her the story of his father's death. Now for me, this scene gets me every time I watch it. I think this is one of the most powerful scenes I have ever seen. It is just so powerful. So obviously we have Clark having this fight with Jonathan Kent. And obviously Clark knows he's in the wrong here and he's like, I shouldn't have said that. And that's the last thing he actually, like basically he rinsed his father right there. This is going to be the last thing he says to him. And then obviously the tornado hits. They're getting everyone to safety. The dog's stuck in there. But Jonathan Kent gives the baby to Clark and says, look, take the baby, take your mother and go to the overpass. Stay there. I'm going to go get the dog. And now... People might say, oh, well, Clark can just run in and grab the thing. But look, at the same time, I get that. He can. But there's a lot of people watching. So one, they're going to seek what Clark can do. And then it's no secret anymore. And two, what happens if something happens at the overpass while Clark's getting the dog? He's not there to save everyone. So Jonathan, at the same time, is saying, well, if Clark's with everyone there, he can at least save more people there than he can when he's with the dog. So Jonathan goes and saves the dog. In the process, gets his ankle caught in the door when a car crashes on top of the other car. And now his ankle's bugged. And this is the moment that I absolutely love. Is Clark's there and he looks around and he sees everyone. And he's just, he's about to say, screw this. I'm about to reveal everything I am to save my father. And Jonathan then sticks his hand up and says, no. It's powerful. As a parent. Your goal is to protect your kids at all costs, no matter what the, the situation is, no matter what. If it means you have to give up your own life to protect them, you do it. That's what this scene is about. This is about Clark trusting his father and believing what he is saying is correct. Jonathan willing to give his own life up to protect Clark from a situation where everyone's going to find out what he can do and then it's all going to be hell. Things are going to be chaotic. There's going to be a being out there that everyone is scared of. And who knows what happens to Clark. And that's when Clark tells Lois Lane, I trusted him. I trusted my father. And it's just so powerful. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's perfect. It's a perfect scene for me. Absolutely fantastic. And it is why Clark is who he is moving forward. Why he is such a good person, why he's the best of humanity and the best of Krypton. It's because of that moment, because of his father, and I love that relationship. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. Perfection for me. Absolute perfection. And then, obviously, General Zord arrives, and we get this whole thing of idea of, yo, we want our guy back. Can you send him back, people? So this is when we get this beautiful moment where Clark goes into a church and is actually talking to the pastor there, and he's, like, saying to him, like, they're after me. Like, I don't trust General Zord, but at the same time, I don't know if humanity can be trusted. And as he's about to walk out, the priest says to him, hey man, it's a leap of faith. The trust part comes later. You just got to take the leap of faith. And I think that is critical to Clark deciding whether to save humanity or not. Is that moment there, like, I just have to trust them. I guess I do. So when he turns himself in, he then goes and meets General Zord on the thing. He obviously gets trapped. And this is where we get that beautiful dream sequence as well. Where we understand General Zord's main motivation. Build Krypton. Rebuild it. Bring it back. And I love it when he says to Clark, I want you to be a part of it, Clark. And then Clark's like, well, how are you going to do this? And he goes, the foundation must be built on something. And it's all the skulls of the humanity race. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant writing. It's fantastic. It works so well. It's scary. And then obviously Lois Lane then loads up Jorel into the ship. And this is where we get that beautiful sequence. This is like my favorite, my favorite moment in the whole movie is 
when Jarrell's there with Clark, and he's like struck that panel, and Clark strikes the panel, and it's Lois Lane falling in a pod that's falling apart, and he says to her, "Look." It's never gone. You can save all of them. And it's just, it's so powerful, man. It's its just brilliant. Like, it's so good. Like, Jarrell is fantastic. And Clark, it's just, it's perfect, man. its That is Superman. That scene right there where Jarrell tells him, you can save her. You can save all of them. Is Superman. That is Superman right there. It's fucking brilliant, man. It is perfection. It's so good. And then he goes down and he saves Lois. And then we have General Zord going and threatening his mother. Superman comes flying in afterwards and he grabs General Zord, smashing her. And look, people say, oh, well, why didn't you just throw him somewhere else or do anything? Why do you go to Smallville? Bro, man just threatened his mother. He is full of rage at this point. Like, this guy has just threatened his mother. He just grabs him. He's like, you want to threaten my mother? And just beating General Zord right there as they're flying through. Man, the guy's not even thinking. And I totally understand that. Like, when you are just full of rage, you don't think. And that's what Superman is at this point. And you got to remember, this is Superman's literally first time fighting. So, he doesn't know anything. And we get this beautiful, awesome fight sequence in Smallville. Absolutely love that. The action sequences are fantastic. It's just brilliant. And then we get this huge fight. It's brilliant. And now General Zord is going to terraform Earth. And this is where we get this madass fight going on. And they're going to send him to the Phantom Zone. And they're going to use Clark's old ship. Meanwhile, General Zord is off to the other ship with the whole, what's it called? Chamber full of all the Kryptonian babies and everything like that, where he's going to use to build it. And then he's having this beautiful conversation with Jarrell. It's fantastic. It's just absolutely brilliant. Like, I'm arguing its merits with a ghost. It's just, that is just so good. And I love Jarrell. I really do love him in this movie. Russell Crowe's fantastic. So we have that beautiful moment. And then we have Superman going to the other side where he's going to destroy the world engine. He's going to destroy it. And we have this beautiful sequence with the music, man. Hans Zimmer's music, man, is just so good. First flight. That scene is incredible. And it's the music on top of that is fantastic. It's just perfect. And then we get this beautiful moment where Superman flies up, blows up the world engine. And they're about to send everyone, all the other people, all the other Kryptonians to the Phantom Zone. General Zord is about to blow them up. Next thing you know, Superman comes in and takes that ship down. And this is the moment where Superman has that choice now. Save humanity or not. So why they are destroying, trying to send everyone else to the Phantom Zone, Zord says to him, man, if you destroy this ship, you are dooming Krypton forever. And this is where Superman now has that choice. Humanity or Krypton. And he even says, Krypton had its chance. So he destroys the ship. They crash. And then, boom, the Phantom Zone moment happens. They're sending everyone to the Phantom Zone. Lois Lane is falling out. Superman comes, grabs her, and is fighting the gravity of the black hole. Trying to suck, suck him in. It's brilliant. They all land. It's absolutely fantastic. Like, the cinematography in this movie is freaking brilliant. It's so good. There's just so much here that is fantastic. And then we get the moment that makes General Zord the greatest villain in Superman history. Like, one of the best villains of all time is when he's sitting there. He has the ash of the Kryptonian ship. And, he throw, and he's just like there. And he's just like, I exist only to protect Krypton. That is the sole purpose for which I was born. I have no purpose. This man is the hero of his story. He thinks he's the hero. He's saving Krypton. That's his motivation, is to save his own people. To bring them back from extinction. That is his motivation, man. It's scary. And then, you know what's even more scary about a villain that has motivation, that actually has a purpose, and that feels like he's the hero of the story? Is a villain who is a crushed hero of his story. Who was the hero and then everything was taken away and now he has no sense of purpose. That villain is even scarier. Because he is unhinged at this point. And that's what we see. General Zord is unhinged. They just fight. Now people are like, why doesn't Superman take General Zord out of, the, out of there and fight him in the desert or something like that where there's no people? Bruh. General Zord literally says to him, hey man, I'll tell you right now. 
I'm killing every human. You want to? I'm going to make you mourn for every single one. I'm going to kill them all. You think General Zord's going to be like, oh yeah, man, let's go fight over in the desert, man. Sounds freaking sick. No, he ain't. General Zord ain't doing that. General Zord is fighting in that city and he's going to kill as many people as he can, whether Superman likes it or not. So Superman has to fight in there. And like, it's just going to go down that way. And they're fighting. It's a beautiful sequence. We see General Zord master his senses. It's absolutely phenomenal. And then Superman finally gets him in the hold as they fly into like this museum place. He's got General Zord in the headlock. And now prior to that, go to remember, General Zord did say this to Clark. There's only one way this ends, Clark. Either you die, or I die. So it's already there. Like, there's no place on humanity that can hold a Kryptonian. There is no one that can hold General Zord. Like, he just breaks the jail cells like that. Like, you can't hold it. It's impossible. Crypt Krypton is not a, Krypt Kryptonite is not a thing right now. It's not into Batman vs. Superman, so you can't even use that. So, he's got him in a headlock, and now this is where General Zord says, you love these humans so much, then you can mourn for him. And there's his family, like, in the corner, just there, as General Zord's laser eyes are getting closer and closer to him. Clark now has the decision to make. Kill General Zord, and become the final member of the Kryptonian race. Be alone again. Had no one. Or two, not kill him, and then he just goes on and kills everyone else. So he has to make choice, and he's left with no choice. And I appreciate Zack Snyder doing that. I appreciate him putting the Superman in that thing and testing him. He kills General Zord. I don't find it a massive deal. He had to in that situation. There's no other way. And people are like, oh, he could have flown up. Like what? And he flies up, and then what? The fight continues. More people die. More damage happens to the city. He has to finish him right now. There's no other way to do it. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. It's great. I think it's brilliant. Yes, the lowest and love story with Clark, it could have been expanded upon a bit more. Yes, but it is good enough for this movie. And I love that that wasn't the main focus. Like we move it, we can move forward into another movie with that as the focus like Superman 2 did. Now, I feel like General Zord in this movie is a 10 times better than the previous General Zord that we saw. That one didn't have any motive. This one has motive. This one's scary. It's the hero of the story. It's brilliant. Man of Steel for me is a 10 out of 10. I think it's perfection. I really do. I think it's absolutely masterclass. I think Zack Snyder knew exactly what he was doing. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. Say what you want. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. But I love Man of Steel. So let me know yours in down in the comment section below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down in that comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. See you guys next video. Until then, stay safe. Peace out.